You speak to Connie? Yeah, when I, when I spoke to Connie, I said I could probably answer his questions, and um, he asked me about that, and I said, yeah, I have a message on today. So I'm going to <coughs> we didn't get him. Right. What other messages did he want to know? Um, if we had spoken to Runcy recently. Who? Runcy, Superintendent you know Runcy. No, I have not. And that's what I told him. I said, I, to the best of my knowledge, we haven't sent him anything recently. So. Okay, so see if we can get an appointment to speak to Rumsey. He wanted us to send a letter. What? He wanted us to send a letter. To him? Yeah. To Rumsey? Yeah, so maybe you should speak to Connie about what, what he wants. Okay. Uh, first, let me tell you that I couldn't get I couldn't get to see any of those. Okay. This is This will work right off of a DVD. And you know, you just, in, or even in a TV, you could pop that in and it would just run. That runs off of a computer after you've translated it over, right? But I, I can't translate it over. That's okay. Well, I'll, there's probably a problem on my side then. Well, Initially, I don't have this. Uh, you're using. Oh, you got to have quick time, right? I don't right, have right, quick right, right. time. Man. This right here is an audio CD. You can listen to it in your car. And that's something you already created, and I'm just saying, I still think it's good. You were good three years ago. <laughs> <laughs> this one I like better than. Isn't the, it? Isn't that great? I, I like that one. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 I like that one. This one we can throw out. Okay. See, this is progress. Right by your thing. <laughs> there we go. All right, now what's okay. on your agenda? Well, I'm glad to hear that Bruncey's on the, on the uh, agenda, well, in a sense, just checking in, seeing how it's going with Bruncey. Um, Jeff had a very good question. He understands that, you know, you're wanting to, he, the way he puts it is, it's like melding computers with Maria Montessori. Yeah. So can I, can I? Sure. <clears throat> so you, Steve tells me that uh, some time ago that you came up with the idea for distance education. I did. On a large scale. Well, that's what saved the university. That's big. <laughs> <laughs> um, so what, 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 what do you think about now? What do you think about sort of computer-based learning programs in, in high schools? Do you, what do you more think? and more. Just last night I read some more while I was waiting to listen to the end of the... And more and more high schools are providing opportunities because Florida has a free high school. Mm -hmm. So more and more high schools are using that as a way of saving some money because it costs nothing for a student to enroll. In Florida the, virtual school? In the virtual schools. Right. So... Some schools are making them take at least one course, some are taking two courses, uh, and it lets them learn how to deal with distance education, etc. So what you're looking at is a, is the Model T Ford for this, this education coming that way. MIT now has all their program on, and you, you can take it without credit, or you have to pay if you want credit. Right. But it's available. Harvard, the second institution, Harvard's now doing the same thing. So if MIT and Harvard start doing it, you're going to have more Kaplan's and more of that stuff. So, so in, excuse me, so in terms of can I, could I go on to Harvard's website, enroll in one of these classes, pay X amount of dollars? And as soon as they're ready to do that, yes. But MIT, I can do that, yes. MIT right. is already there. But... If I continue to, if I, is there a progression course within these courses where I could get a degree from MIT, or is it a certificate that they would give me? I can't answer those questions, but I do know that you can take a course for credit and pay them the tuition, or just take, teach yourself right. without them. I think, interestingly, this, this type of learning could be really good for um, sort of, take away from advanced placement courses in high schools mm -hmm. 
and uh, the IBO program, which is the International Baccalaureate, which kind of where you end up taking early level high school university courses. So then you go in as a as a second semester sophomore, sometimes even a junior. Oh sure. Because you've taken that credit. You can do that now. Mm -hmm. uh, if you were talking about high school, you could do that in Florida's virtual high school. Right. Oh wow. See that's I mean that makes to me that makes perfect sense. All done. All done. And the V School Z has all the advanced placement courses available. And that's the that's the group that's on Coral in Coral Springs. Okay. It's called V School Z. Yeah, it's in Coral Springs, huh. and they are doing this. They are doing that even now. In fact, they're looking to market their stuff. Do you think, in terms of computer base, you're looking at? Steve's kind of mentioned some things. You're looking at doing it on a small school, high school pro level at first, and then on a large school, high school program, hopefully. The virtual high school. Is there for the whole state. Right. So it can't be small. Right. I think he's talking about the um, iZone, the innovation. The V-School Z, v -School Z is selling their software, high school software. Actually, they're K-12. They're selling all their software and making it available to schools. And they'll come in and even help your teachers integrated into the fabric of their instructional process. And that's been funded through Wayne Heisinger and it's four years in development. But do you have to, now what is your contact with the physical site of a high school then? Must you go to the physical high school? As no, a student? no, 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 no. As a do student. it at home. But then doesn't that defeat the reason, doesn't that defeat the basic reason behind public education? It's public? No, no. <laughs> isn't that is true? Touche. Isn't isn't the whole reason of public education is that when we, when we got to the point where you, children could not work, and child labor laws went away, we needed some place to house children, so therefore we created schools to house children on a mass level. No, mm -hmm. no. It grew when the industrial revolution came and people left the farms where they had one-room schoolhouses okay. and come, went to the city. And what they did, the city did was, whoa, what am I going to do with all these kids? So they grouped the kids by age. By age. Right. So if you were six-year-olds, you went into the first grade. Mm -hmm. And they, we, we created these boxes. Mm -hmm. We started in September and we ended in June. Why? Because they went back to the farm nice. to go to work right. and help their parents if they had parents, etc. So it, it grew out of a, a need for kids to get educated so that they can leave the farm and take part in the industrial revolution that was taking place in the cities. But wasn't it also, a, did, was, did it also serve as like a, a holding center for, for kids during the day while their parents went to work? No, they had to go to school. Okay. They, they did have places where they were holding cells, <laughs> but that had nothing to do with but I, the I, public I, education. I, I sort of mean it figuratively. I mean, I guess one of the I, it keep them off the street. So I, so my my understanding, and I could be, and you know, I could be wrong. This is just the way I've kind of looked at it, is that school public education developed as a way to uh, at a time when we were seeing a large explosion in population. In the cities. In the cities. Yes. Mm -hmm. And a way to deal with educate one, yes, but two, as a way to kind of create this sort of structured society that we were moving towards. Because when 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 was the when was the real rise of public education? Uh, early nineteen hundreds. Nineteen hundreds, which also coincides with the rise of. Industrialization. Industrial, the industrial change, right. Right, but also at that time, eugenetics, things about that we could really change the course of the way the world works by changing. Social engineering. Social engineering was right. happening at that time, too. Yeah, but primarily, remember, we were an agrarian country. All of a okay. sudden, we moved from the, from the mainly agrarian to an industrial, and we produced food in much larger quantities because we now had the machines to do it. 
instead of the human labor. So the kids didn't have to stay home in the farm. They, okay. they went to the cities. But now we had the kids in the cities. Right. So we created an industrial model. Right. But what are the kids supposed to do who are not going to school? Who's They who, went to school from se September to June. Right. Right. Then they went home to help their parents back on the farm. But now they're not in school under this um, distance uh, model. Right now, you know? right now, if you wanted to enroll in the virtual Florida one, you don't have to be in school. Yeah. But who's watching the kid children then? Who's watching children? The parents who, who are working. But the parents, the parents are working, and the they, children they put them into they put them into daycare. <laughs> right. It's not public. Interesting. And then when they're like teenagers, it's not public. Yeah. Hmm. It's, Although it's, the 